Um, so now uh, up, we have the last in this set of seven, then we're gonna take a break and play our little game where we try to judge the millifullers. Um, uh, the next person speaking is uh, Avinash Baskaran. And uh, I asked him to, um, uh, I asked him to do this relatively small project very quickly and he got it done very quickly. And you'll see how it fits into the composability that both Jeff and Ben were talking about. Um, Avinash worked with me on um, a very sophisticated robot, which you're gonna see much later in the conference and is now a graduate student at Auburn University um, uh, he and I just published a paper. Um, we were going to travel to Singapore to do it, but because of COVID, it was all uh, virtualized. Um, so Avinash, take it away, please. Thank you, Dr. Reed. Uh, thank you for those uh, words. Yeah, it's a pretty small project here. You know, um, I'm hoping by the end of the presentation, most people will think, you know, man, I could have done this in five minutes, right? And uh, that's kind of the goal is to show in many ways how, you know, individuals or kind of everyday folks can, you know, really make a big change. Uh, so Dr. Reed, could you just jump to the next uh, slide there? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so I guess, you know, part of the question here was uh, kind of exemplifying the modularity uh, that engineers can use and innovators can employ to generate extraordinary change incrementally. Um, and so, you know, how many people can now approach this problem given the resources that we have online and you know, fast shipping of uh, kind of simple electronic parts uh, is this idea of working together to create a family of complementary innovations or <clears throat> around a product or service, uh, which can work together to carry out a single strategy or purpose. And so this is kind of um, complementary to the approach that universities and uh, private corporations can take, which is to, you know, develop a single product or solution that kind of solves the whole problem for many folks. And this is a different approach where you know, people uh, in a distributed fashion around the world can, you know, collaborate to, to develop a, a, an integrated solution uh, rather than as a single entity. Yeah, so uh, basically, uh, you know, a patient inflating valve uh, can be a one-way valve that closes to enable lung inflation and can open to allow exhalation and support spontaneous breathing. So this design was made of simple 3D printed parts. As you can see, it's got a thin piece of polypropylene plastic to act as a sealant, and that's on that kind of white cap that you can see in the video there on the end of the solenoid. Uh, and yeah, it has a 12, uh, 12, dollar, 12 volt, 12 volt uh, solenoid actuator in there to complete the valve and simple microcontroller to control it. So you know, it has some pros and cons. Uh, it has a very simple design and a very low fabrication cost. So this whole product can be probably produced in, you know, for less than $25. Um, and, uh, you know, the cons, you know, it's got poor sealing. So that's part of, you know, the quickness and turnaround time for the product is I didn't work too, you know, too diligently to make sure it's sealed 100%. And I didn't uh, test it with kind of respiratory pressures, uh, both of which can, you know, quickly be done, of course. And it also has this simple binary function. So it doesn't have, you know, servo motor or something that can give it, you know, kind of this robust control. It has a really simple control uh, element there. But, uh, you know, all in all, it, it, meet, it met the two goals that I had uh, coming in, which is to explicate that design process of, you know, individuals or even, you know, students like me can can make a simple product that, that can meet the needs of a larger uh, problem. So, you know, in, in a situation where, you know, you don't have power, you know, you don't have uh, uh, a support for spontaneous, spontaneous breathing uh, set up with the ventilator that you're using, if you put this guy in line, it has standard 22 mil millimeter ports uh, that make it compatible with many ventilator designs. Uh, you know, it can be simply assembled by just uh, placing the sealant cap on the end of the solenoid, placing the solenoid in the valve, and then placing a plastic cap on the back uh, to uh, prevent air leakage out of the place where the solenoid is inserted. Um, so yeah, it, it, it met those goals and it met the design goals that Dr. Reed uh, gave me in producing it. So. Overall, I'd say it was a small success. Okay, thank you very much. Let me point out something. If you guys can see this, the, the thing that Avinash was producing, I mean, obviously solenoid valves exist before, but there's a medical standard for adult airways is 22 millimeter hose. And they, it has a defined taper for a female and a male 
connector. And anywhere you go in a hospital where you have adult airways, you're going to have that. And he built the 3D part for that. So um, although this is not what I would consider an invention per se, um, the beauty of what Avinash did was you could, if you had that, you could on your bench just plug together 22 millimeter airways and start controlling things. Uh, so it's it's sort of a convenience, but it's part of um, the idea of focusing on composability where you just plug things together. 